Th then there's also an interesting link to Albert Einstein. Mm. How did that come about? What's the backstory on that? This this comes about because of the tradition that Lick began uh, in. 1889, the year after it was built, uh, to observe total solar eclipses. Right. So, and there were all sorts of scientific uh, uh, objectives that you could pursue at eclipse time. And one of them was suggested by Albert Einstein in about 1915, when he first published the final um, uh, form of his theory of general relativity. And he it predicted, among other things, that light would be bent in a gravitational field. So if you had a, a, a pencil beam of light going and there was a, something massive, it would be bent a little bit and go off slightly in a different direction. And he suggested that this be tested at total solar eclipses. And according to Einstein, those stars should look a little bit displaced because the light is getting bent and we're seeing it over there instead of over there. And uh, that was a test that was only possible to do at total solar eclipse and very difficult to do. And it was attempted first by Lick in 1914 in Russia at an eclipse. They tried again in 1918 with, with very limited success, um, and but never went to publication because the data weren't very good. And then in 1919, a British expedition led by Sir Arthur Eddington um, did manage to at least provisionally uh, confirm this displacement of, of starlight by just the amount predicted by by Einstein. But there were still a great many doubters and the, the uh, British data were not the best. Um, and many people thought, no, this, this can't be, it needs corroboration. So W.W. Campbell, who was then uh, the director of Lick Observatory, made it his aim to put this to rest once and for all. And he was actually not very thrilled by Einstein's, by the general relativity. He would have probably preferred a classical universe. But to his credit, he went after it. And when in Australia in 1922 at, at, uh, at an eclipse, uh, Lick succeeded in uh, returning a resounding corroboration of Einstein's Einstein, Campbell was right there with it. So, <laughs> so you're saying, yeah. yay. Yeah. So, yeah, so scientists don't always get what they want, but uh, but but he got a wonderful result. And So this is, again, yeah. uh, it was relegated to uh, the footnote level. Uh, well, Campbell's. Well, it's not there in the general, as you would say, popular culture. Or popular no, it, no, no, it isn't. But within the, within the, the eclipse and the general relativity, uh, yes, within the niche, it's, it's known. certainly very much there. Yeah, within the it's niche, well it's done. known. Yeah. But here in Silicon Valley, we don't know no. that there's a direct connection between Einstein and, and the, the observatory. Lick observatory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th that's what I'm getting right. at, you know. Right. So this is, again, a hidden... Uh, no, I see what you mean. It's yeah. a hidden treasure, really. Yeah. We have, and I hope someday to have them on display at the observatory, but in the archive, we have the lenses that were used for... Uh, for, for those observations. And it's nice to think, oh yeah, in 1922, the light passed through this lens that proved the theory of relativity. So.